One week before Josh Duggar is scheduled to be sentenced for his crimes against minors, the prosecution in his case has filed a pair of motions with the Western District of Arkansas Federal Court in Fayetteville. These lawyers did so in response to Duggar's defense team having issued its own sentencing memorandum back on May 11th. The convicted sex abuser's attorneys wrote in this memo that their client only deserves to serve five years in prison. In response, prosecutors are now attempting to shoot down its opponent's reasoning, point by ridiculous point. For example, earlier this month, the defense objected to the material Josh downloaded from his workplace computer as being labeled sadistic or masochistic, seemingly trying to downplay the photos and videos found on this device. On May 18th, however, the government's filing stated that Duggar downloaded multiple videos depicting just that and continues with an explicit description of specific files, including some containing unquestionably sadistic abuse of young girls. Duggar makes no attempt to grapple with this evidence or controlling precedent, the motion notes, and his objection should be overruled on the record before the court. As previously reported, a video shown during Duggar's trial depicted the rape of an 18-month-old. The defense, meanwhile, has maintained that Duggar downloaded 127 images, while the prosecution has stated on multiple occasions that the total was actually over 600. Elsewhere, Josh's lawyers objected to Duggar's past being used against him, quoting supposedly unreliable reporting from a tabloid magazine in regard to claims that Duggar molested children when he was a teenager. The thing is, Duggar confessed in 2015 to molesting children when he was a teenager, including his own sisters. Hilariously, and let's face it depressingly, prosecutors wrote in their rebuttal that these incidents were corroborated by the self-serving testimony of his own father. Indeed, Jim Bob Duggar testified at his son's trial and was forced to discuss at the time how he helped cover up Duggar's heinous misdeeds all that time ago. Speaking of Josh's family members, the defense next brought up letters written by Michelle Duggar and Anna Duggar that alleged Josh is a devoted family man and also a man of faith. These letters argue that Josh deserves a lenient sentence. The prosecution, however, fires back strongly against these classifications of the sex abuser. Its official response even addresses the fact that Duggar himself has noted he grew up in front of television cameras and appears to suggest that his crimes are related to the challenges associated with being a child whose everyday life is viewed by the public and, in certain instances, being criticized by the media and complete strangers. Translation. Josh has tried to blame his pedophilia on the struggles one can encounter in the spotlight. And the prosecution was simply not having it, responding with a passage that deserves to be highlighted on its own. These claims only underscore the appropriateness of the government's sentencing recommendation. Indeed, his supportive family and public-facing and privileged lifestyle make his pattern of criminal conduct all the more baffling. Despite achieving some level of fame through reality television as an adult, he is better known at this point for his behavior outside his family's show, including his sexual improprieties and criminal sexual conduct. More importantly, none of these letters meaningfully grapple with his crimes or his sexual proclivities toward prepubescent girls. At least one suggests that enemies threatened by his quiet display of conservative values are targeting him while simultaneously advancing his impossible theory that an unscrupulous young man framed him. Many more describe his conviction generally as an unfortunate happenstance, something that has simply befallen him despite his best efforts to avoid it. That is precisely the problem. Absent some recognition from Duggar of his crimes and his need to address his demonstrated and long-standing sexual interest in children, it is unlikely that he will ever view his conviction as anything other than proof that he needs to be more circumspect and secretive the next time he engages in conduct involving CSA. Simply put, this final paragraph argues that it's probable Josh will try and commit further sex crimes whenever he's released from jail. The government cited studies that show how sex offenders are four times more likely than other violent criminals to recommit their crimes in making this point. The filing concluded by asking the court to overrule the defense team's objections. It once again recommended the maximum 20-year sentence. By the time this article is made, it is yet to be seen. That's it for now, thank you for watching, please subscribe to stay tuned.